We are here with a guy that I need some paper to, to tell you what he does. He is a CCA owner. He has studied at Webster University at Estacio here in Nova Iguaçu, I guess, right? Well, uh, afterwards he's going to make it clear to you. He has studied at Centro Educacional de Nova Iguaçu, so he is... Uh, he, all his accomplishments, I would say, started here. Um, he lived or lives in Arkansas. You are going to discover this too. And he is from Rio de Janeiro, and you will understand it, why everything started in Nova Iguaçu. So help me welcome this special person named Leonardo França. <laughs> Nice to be with you. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you very much for having me here. It's uh, a pleasure to see you again. Uh, again. You will know why he says again, okay, people? Well, uh, as you know from our advertisement, Leo, can I call you Leo without oh, yes, problem? Yes, just make yourself okay. comfortable. Okay. Leo is a teacher, a businessman, a preacher, a coach, etc. Okay, so uh, I would like to start asking him a first question, which is um, thinking of English, which is our purpose here, right? And all these professions, how do they interconnect? I mean, what is the connection between English and these four things you do at least? Well, English, as a matter of fact, I, mean, I speak English and Spanish fluently. I have learned Spanish at CCAA as well. So, I mean, the, speaking a second language and a third language, in my case, has helped me with all the, this occupation profession because I do it like a, a, in other countries. So that the language that I use with those professions is in, is in English and Spanish. When I go all over the world, for example, like preaching and uh, uh, doing my coaching stuff, like giving lectures, you know, and like running my business because I've got like four CCAA schools. So... English is my, I consider nowadays English as my first language and Portuguese is my second language and like Spanish is a foreign language for me, you know. <laughs> yeah, after some time speaking English, we all feel like that, right? And where have you learned how to speak English and Spanish? Well, I have learned how to speak English and Spanish at CCAA. This is, I want to make it very clear, you know, because the first time I, have, I traveled abroad was like in 1994. It was to go overseas to give a lecture. So I have never learned English abroad. And sometimes people think, oh, your English is okay because you have learned, you, know, you have lived in the United States. No, when I first traveled abroad, they already had this kind of English. You know, when I took my master's in the United States, I already had this kind of English, you know. So everything I have learned, I have learned from CCAA, both English and Spanish. And is that uh, some of the reason you ended up working at CCAA? Because in fact, guys, this guy runs or owns four CCAA branches, right? Yes. And uh, more than that, I'd like you to know Afterwards, you can ask him questions about this, but I'd like you to know, after having some talk to you, Leo, I realized you were a kind of, I'm sorry if you don't like the comparison, a kind of a Jesus Christ at CCA because, yeah, he rose the four CCAs from death. Yeah, I'd like you to tell them a little about your story of having very few students and after some time running the, the, the branch, um, you kind of had many students again. And you did it once, twice, three times, four times. How come? Tell us the, your secret. Yeah, I, I wouldn't compare myself to Jesus, you know, but <laughs> I know. anyway, I mean, he helped me a lot, you know, I mean, <laughs> because it takes, it, it takes a miracle for those things to happen. Well, as a matter of fact, this is my sixth school. I've, I mean, I started in Paracambi, where I live. And then I remember that when I was in Paracambi, I was 21 years old, and the school had only 37 students. And we grew to 612 when I left there. 
And then we opened the second school in Sedopetska from, I mean, they had also gone bankruptcy and I, I, we grew to 500. And then I broke up my partnership and I decided to be by myself and I went to, they invited me to take over Itaguaí school and they had like 44 students there. And in a year we had accomplished like 150, you know, and over some years we already have very good number of students. And at that time, when I broke up my partnership, I moved to the United States to take my master's degree. And I mean, CCA called me to offer me because Mangarachiba was also going down. So I came you from see, the United I States. Told you. I came from the United States, you know, and then we relocated the school and we started the school there. And uh, so we grew 150% that semester. And then I went to Europe to live in Europe for a while. And then CCA invited me to, because they closed the school in Bento Ribeiro. And they invited me to go there and open a school. And then I opened the school, and now we have like almost 500 students. And I opened, I mean, I got to save Elizabeth. To save Elizabeth was the only one that didn't go down, and I had to bring it up, you know, yeah. Resurrection, for sure, right? He told us uh, the story, but he didn't tell us his secret, right? What he did so it could happen. Well, it, it's simple. I mean, secret is simple. Dedicate yourself work hard, have faith, and I mean, if you dedicate yourself, work hard, have faith, and if you put Jesus in front of everything, so you, go. you got it. I mean, you have whichever your religion is, I don't want to be religious I understand, here. I understand, you know. uh, I understand. You have a sentence that really touched me, because I, I really think that the more different people we have, the more we can grow in all aspects. And you said something to me, in our conversations, in the audio, you said something like this. Different people, and it's good for you guys at CCAA working or being students, because if you are a student today, you can be uh, one partner later. Uh, different people in the same team makes the team better. Most people think that difference is a problem, right? Because, uh, it's too difficult. I say one thing, the person gets, and how could you cope so many differences uh, in different branches and make, I understand that people uh, could somehow understand your message so they could join, work together and make these numbers grow. Mm -hmm. So did it uh, work this way or? Yes, that's exactly how it worked. I do believe that whenever you are putting up a team, you should have a team with different people that think differently because if you only have like people who think the same way you do you're not gonna, you're not going to go far if you want to go further you have to get that gather people who think different from you have different ideas so they have different insights you're not right all the time you know you make mistakes so you you if you are in a business and if you don't want your business to go down you need people people is people are people is what it makes difference you know and uh, when it comes to putting everything together, you know, uh, it's, it's just like uh, this makes difference. You have to make people understand your dream. And when you make people understand your dream, they start dreaming your dream with you. And by dreaming your dream with you, they understand that they have their own dreams. And when they help you dream, your, they help you make your dream come true their dream as a consequence is going to be fulfilled if somebody if somebody's dreams can come true so mine can exactly That's, yes and, and so the, can mine the difference is this you know uh -huh. you have to believe in people you have sure. to believe in people and sometimes people do not believe in themselves and then you sure. have to show them you believe in them so that's like oh. an engine mm -hmm. Yes, I was thinking of a song here. Well, this guy has also visited many countries. And he's going to tell us a little about uh, the list of countries he has visited, what he did there. Can you? Yeah, uh, I hope I can remember all of them. <laughs> uh, well, I have uh, lived in America. I mean, I've been coming to America for over, I mean, since 2006, I've been going there like every year, sometimes more than a year. But I've been to the Netherlands, Italy, France, England, Switzerland, uh, Congo, South Africa, Mozambique, Colombia, Uruguay. Well, I think this is it, you know. 
and uh, doing the same activities? Yes, the same activities. What I do is like, I'm a missionary, you know, in those countries. I usually go, it depends on the need of the place. For example, in Congo, I went there to preach the gospel, you know. In the Netherlands, they have very, they are like, a, they are a Christian country already. So I do not need to preach, you know, because they already, they have their belief. But I worked in a, in a mission, uh, in a mission headquarter, and I translated books into Portuguese, because they had books in Dutch, and I had to translate it into Portuguese without, I don't Do speak, speak Dutch, Dutch, you know, but they had like a version in English. But it was, it was so a very it was, nice, it was very interesting. It was a translation from the translation. It was a translation from the translation, <laughs> which was terrible because the person who translated from Dutch into English had a terrible English. The person surely didn't study at CCAA, you know? <laughs> and sometimes I had to get people from, uh, that lived the, the, the history there to read from the original so that I got the idea of what it was. And then I found lots of mistakes in the, tr in the, in the English version, you know. Lots yeah. of work. How yeah. long did you stay there? To oh, it was like three months. Three months is yeah. doing all that? In the Netherlands. I loved it. Uh, I, I see you love what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's sure we all know that English opens many doors. Don't you think, guys? Many, many doors. Well, I have to add something here. Sure. Not only English, but Spanish as well. Ah, sure. Because, I mean, sometimes we, we, we forget about Spanish, you know. In some of those countries, not to say most of them, I speak Spanish. For example, you never think you will need Spanish in Switzerland. So I went to Switzerland to give lectures. And I, I was expecting to be translated from English into Italy, Italian, because I was in the Ita Italian part of, his, of Switzerland. But, I mean, three of the meetings that I held there, I, had, they, I was asked to do it in Spanish. So I had all my material in English, but I had to speak Spanish, because they had, like, lots of Hispanic, Hispanic I mean, Hispanics, Hispanic-speaking people, you know, so... Right, it was easier I was in to... Switzerland, you know, I mean, that never you crossed never my imagine. mind. I would, like, speaking Spanish in Switzerland. Needless to say, in America nowadays, you can just, like, travel all over the United States j just speaking Spanish. Everybody does, yeah. Okay, and um, cool for you guys, because you can speak English and Spanish from CCAA, right? <laughs> you, but Spanish is really important. Uh, podemos hablar un poquito después, ¿sí? Desde luego que sí, no pasa nada. Me encanta hablar español también. <laughs> no hablo también como, como tú, pero como usted si quiere no, 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 un, puede decir un tratamiento tú, puede más decir formal. Tú, puede no? decir tú, pero estoy seguro está, que tú hablas muy bien el español está, también. Está bien. Um, back to English. I was saying that English opens many doors, but I think you will agree with me that uh, Leo could benefit a little more from these doors, right? What happened? What's your differential? How could you have so many doors open from English? Because not everybody that studies English will have so many opportunities. What's your differential? I, I would say that I don't think there is like, I'm different or there is a differential part of me. I just, I'm a dreamer and I'm a visionary. You know, I never let anything be my way. You know, when I have a dream, I just go for it. And if I believe that if it doesn't happen, if it's because it's not the time to happen or it's not for me. When I was a student, I came from a very simple, I wouldn't say poor, but a very simple background. So my mom and dad, they, they struggled a lot to pay for my classes. To a point in which I, had to, I was on the verge of stopping studying English at CCAA, and the school director invited me to become a teacher because I was a good student. So I paid for, I mean, to a point, I paid for my language classes. I mean, I gave classes for free in return of, uh, of being able to study at CCAA, you know, mm -hmm. back then. And I mean, the doors just presented it themselves to me and I just entered, you know. And I mean, I always studied very hard, very, very hard, you know. And whenever the doors presented themselves, I just went through it. Uh, so you and knew, faith. You knew how to, you identified that the door was open and then you exactly, entered. Exactly. You, you got the opportunity. And it was easy because of the languages. 
mm -hmm. you know, for example, uh, because of the language, I, I could, I became a coordinator and a director, mm -hmm. you know. Well, let me tell you, he, he told me something about his area of coaching, right? And uh, you made a comparison with my area of psychology. How do you compare them? Do, have you ever heard of coaching? Yeah, I'm a life coach and a business coach. What it means is a, a coach gets a, a person from where, uh, gets a person from where he or she is and leads, guides, uh, directs the person to where the person wants to get. It's different from a psychologist because it, I mean, we don't deal with, we also deal with the emotional and psychiatric part of it, but we cannot work in this area. It's just like, let's say you wanna, as a life coach, you want to like change your, your profession and you do not know what to do. So the person comes for me and we, through, I mean, through lots of different activities, we talk to the person, we have 10 sessions, and then we talk to the person, we have lots of activities, and the person figures out through questions, I mean, through my guidance and questions, mm -hmm. the person figures out what occupation or profession he's going to change into, or he might end up thinking and coming to a conclusion that he doesn't want to change it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. as for the business part, a business coach is like the company is in a situation and the person wants to get somewhere else. Like the production of the company or the productivity of the company is not where the, the owner wants it to be. You know, it is good, but it's not where it, it, it I mean, mm -hmm. the owner wants it to be. So we uh, get the company where it is and we try, I mean, through guidance, make the company get to where the owner wants it to be. And there are lots of things. So sometimes we need, we have together forces like with psychologists, it's people from like sure. uh, humane resources. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we join everybody. Yes. And interconnect. If you are a psychologist and you do coaching classes, it's great. You are gonna be way better. You know. Uh, so nice. I'm like. 50%, it would be 100, you know. I'll like. take your advice. Yes, take, I'll take it. your advice. Because, and it's good money, you're going to you make know, money. And you know how to enter doors which open, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, guys, I would like to open, we have um, many more questions to ask, but I'm going to open a little for some questions so you can interact with our guest, okay? So who would you like to ask Leo any question? He said any, he said he's eclectic. And you could ask him just about anything. You can ask me any question at all, okay? No problem. So, hello, Leonardo. I'm Nathan. Hi, uh, Nathan. I would like to ask you, um, what led you uh, to decide your decision of taking the master's uh, abroad and not here? I've always wanted to be, uh, I, I've always wanted to study in the United States. And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do it in high school because they couldn't afford it. And then I couldn't do it in uh, my uh, undergraduate, you know, because I couldn't afford it, you know. And then with, with I mean, within years, because I work hard as a CEO owner and everything. Well, um, I said, I have, to, I have to do something for myself. You know, I have always done lots of things, you know, and I have always, you know, when you go with the flow, I've always gone with the flow. And then I thought I should give myself a present. And then uh, I said, okay, I want to study abroad. But then everybody I talked to, they said, don't go there and study English. All my American friends and all my, my tutors, you know, they said, don't go there and study English because you are not going to learn anything new, you know, like as for the language, me. Because I have been, I have been a teacher for years, you know. And then I was like, okay, so what am I going to do? And they said, okay, go there and study anything but English. In my case, you know, I wouldn't say that to the, t to the students. I would say, go and take your high school there, you know. And then I, I, I had business, but I was a teacher. I took, I, my undergrad was in languages, in education. So, and I was running four businesses, you know. And I was like, okay, I have expertise in business. But then I said, I want to delve into it. So I said, okay, I'm going to take my master's degree in business, but I want to do it in the United States because they have the best, uh, one of the best, you know, business program in the world. So that's what made up my mind to, to choose 
I'm in business and in the United States. And also because I wanted to have an experience, I mean, living, you know, for a long time in a country, you know. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name is Sarah. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Nice to meet you, too. Have you never thought of giving up? Giving up? Yeah. Giving up what? Everything? Yes. Oh, no, no. You know, it's... Do you know the word adrenalina? I have adrenalina. Uh, okay. You know? Extra. extra adrenalina. It's like <laughs> working with what you like and what you love is just like an adrenalina. It keeps me going and going and going and going. As a matter of fact, I want to have, I want to open 10 CCA schools. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And I want to, like, I want to open a CCA in the United States in the, in the, in the city where I live. Because there, there is a huge percentage of people who do not speak English. And they only speak Spanish. So that's one of my purpose, you know. So I never stop dreaming, you know. So I have never thought of giving up. Yes. But before, I, let me ask you a question. You told us many things about teaching English and so on. And what about the missionary uh, issue? When and how did you decide to be a missionary all over the world? Well, that's a very good question. And uh, when I was 12 years old, I had an encounter with, uh, um, with my God. Let's put it this way, you know, because everybody, I, everybody has different religions, you know, and I respect that. So, but when at, at the age of 12, I had a very, very, very strong you know, religion experience, you know, with the God that I believe. Bye-bye, have a nice day. And uh, back then, I was studying English. And one day when I was 13 years old, I just said, I don't want to study English anymore. You know, because it was hard for me. And I was kind of, I want to give up, you know. It was like, it was hard. I had a girlfriend back then. I wanted to go to my girlfriend's house instead of going to classes. Yeah, and then I almost flunked, you know, book three. It was team three. It was terrible. Yeah, and I got down on my knees and I prayed. And then I said, Lord, English was very hard for me. And I said, Lord, if you want me to learn a language, English and Spanish, I should have, I, I should have mentioned French and German, right? I just mentioned two, you know. <laughs> and I said, so give me a gift, so that I can, if you want to use me to go overseas to help people, because it's not a matter of religion, it's a matter of being committed to helping people, you know? So if you want me to go overseas to help people, and even to help my brothers who come from overseas to my country, give me a special anointing gift to learn a language. In one month, I was fluent in English. So I understood that that was my mission, I had to go everywhere and share and help people. Hello, my name is Thaisa. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Thaisa. Uh, after visiting so many countries, uh, where is the next one? What well, would you choose? That's hard. I, 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 li I partially live in the United States. You know, so like some, I'm four months there, some months here. Now I'm going to be six months straight there, and then I'm going to come here. The plan for, I, 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 you get to a point in your life in which you cannot plan anymore, you know? So I cannot plan long distance anymore. But there is a plan for next year for me to go to Kenya, Uganda, and Australia. Uh, I have like three conferences in those three countries. I don't know, and, and Pakistan. No, oh, for sure, Pakistan. I'm coming to Pakistan in November next year. But there is this possibility, uh, not possibility, they have already invited me to go to Kenya, Uganda, and Australia. But it will all depend on where my life is going to be at that I mean, time. Unfortunately, the last question, okay? Hi, um, I'm, I, want, I wonder what, why, why not? How, how you manage your personal life and your professional one doing so much things? Wow, they have wonderful questions here, you know. That's really, really, really nice question. 
I'm married. I've been married for 21 years. I got married when I was 19 years old. You know, I have no children. You know, so sometimes when I say I got married when I was 19 years old, some people say, "Was she pregnant?" I said, "No, she was not pregnant." You know, <laughs> uh, she's involved with me in everything I do. That's the secret. You cannot dr dream by yourself if you have a family. You know, so my personal life uh, involves my family full time. So my wife travels with me everywhere except for dangerous countries. For example, Congo, she doesn't go with me. Pakistan, she won't go with me. You know, it depends on how dangerous that is. She is my partner in all the schools, so she does the finances in the schools. You know, she pays the bills. I don't like paying the bills. I like, you know, you know buying and spending, you know. Okay. And now I understand why he's been married for 21 years. She runs the money. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. You know, and um, well, I mean, I involve my family in it, and I do make sure that whenever I get home, it's my home. It's not my my business. It's not my work. We do not talk. Sometimes we end up talking about it, and we say, "No, no, we're not at work." So, and I do take vacations. You know. I, everywhere I go, for example, I go on a mission to Congo. No, to Congo, I didn't have any vacation. But anyway, I go to a mission to Australia next year. And I'll make sure after the mission, I'm going to take like two weeks off, you know, with my wife and everything. Yeah, so it's doable. Thank you for your question. Yeah, very nice question, Bruno. Oh, well, guys, since Teresinha told us it's time to finish, right? We are going to obey it. But we are sorry that we can't continue, but we are sure Leonardo will come back someday because we have many more things to talk about, right? I'm, I'm over proud for having him and you don't know why. This She's guy, been my teacher. You know, you know. <laughs> and let me tell you something. She was my teacher when I was a teacher already and she didn't know that. I didn't know. And she was one of my best teachers at CCAA, you know? Uh, yeah. This guy, so, so cute. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sweet of him. But it's very nice. And what I want to tell you, uh, though we have a fewer students now, is that... Uh, um, you see, Leonardo was not the most talkative at that time. He was already teaching, and today he's got all these uh, accomplishments for you to, to, that he's sharing with you, right? So, guys, we are going to meet again maybe next month with some other special guests. Thank you very much for being here. Leo, no words to thank you, right? It I, was very, very, very nice of you. I really appreciate it okay. being here, so thank you for inviting you, me. You are already invited to come back after Uganda and Paxton and everything. It will okay. be my pleasure. Great, thank you. And you guys on the Internet... Tune in because we're going to be together again in one month. This is Connie speaking from CCAA Shopping Nova Iguaçu.